Hey, it's another Commodore Plus 4 video today. This time we're gonna see if we can get this little baby connected to a bulletin board service using Telnet. All right, before we get started, I wanna thank the folks over at CommodoreForever.net for their generous support of this episode through a generous donation of an item we are going to discuss. So we'll come back around to that in just a moment. Okay, this one has been a long time in the making, but today I'm going to show you how to connect your Commodore Plus 4 to a bulletin board system. So we're gonna relive our days of using 300 baud modems, although we'll be moving data a lot faster than 300 baud, in the 21st century on a Commodore Plus 4 using a Wi-Fi modem. Now, you will find a lot of folks using a Wi-Fi modem with a Commodore 64, uh, a Commodore 128, Amiga, and maybe even a VIC-20, but I don't know that I've seen anybody successfully connect one to a Commodore Plus 4, or if they have, they've not documented it. I didn't get a chance to experience the full breadth of the BBS scene back in the early 1980s. However, I always imagined myself logging into Whopper to play a game. Remember that movie? Shall we play a game? Oh. <laughs> Come on, if you were a teen in the 1980s and saw the 1983 film War Games, I'm sure you went out and purchased a modem and connected it to your 8-bit computer. I'm positive, right? Anyway, as I mentioned previously in other videos, my very first computer was a Commodore VIC-20 purchased while in high school. The only devices connected were a television and a data set. A couple of years into college, I sold my VIC-20 and upgraded to a Commodore 128. After the start of a couple of BBSs in my college town, along with the popularity of Quantum Link, which later became AOL, you Welcome. know the You've Got Mail guys, You've got mail. I purchased a 300 baud modem. Wow, it was painfully slow, and using the Commodore Online Service Quantum Link was a blast. However, it was a very costly proposition because there were no local access numbers in my area until many years later. There was a BBS or two in our town. However, they were very Apple and Mac-centric with little Commodore content. Our local college hosted a computer agnostic bulletin board. However, that BBS was geared more towards educational content with a few online games such as the Star Trek game and Blackjack that were really uh, throwbacks or leftovers to the teletype days where you actually had a teletype and you typed on it and it printed the lines line by line instead of having a screen. It was fun, but those games were really showing their age. Even though my BBS experiences were limited, I have fond memories of using my Commodore 128 and a terminal package. VIP XL had this great little graphics interface and it was, a, it was so much fun to use to connect to the bullet board system. Before we start connecting the Plus 4 to a BBS, let's talk a little bit about what a bulletin board system is. Before the availability of the internet to the public, there were bulletin board systems that were connected to phone lines using 300 baud modems that made these funny little sounds to connect to the computers. Let's take a listen. One of the things you have to remember is that connecting to a BBS meant that your home phone was tied up. And if anybody answered that phone extension on another line somewhere in the house... Hadn't you better hang up, Peggy? Someone may want to use the line. Oh, Mom says I've got to hang up now. Bye, Susie. It generally disconnected you from the BBS unless you had some error correction in your modem, which was generally for more pricey modems. So what is a bulletin board system? Well, let's go right to the online source Wikipedia and see what they have to say. They say a bulletin board system, or BBS as we've been calling it, is a computer server running software that allows users to connect to the system using a terminal program. We're gonna mention terminal programs all throughout this episode. As a matter of fact, I think I try every single Commodore Plus 4 terminal program available to get this little experiment working. Once logged into a BBS, the user can perform functions such as uploading and downloading software and data, reading news and bulletins, exchanging messages with other users, sometimes via direct chatting. Can you imagine? Sometimes with direct chatting, we're so used to chatting directly now in that synchronous mode, there used to be a time 
time where that was a novel idea. In the early 1980s, message networks such as FidoNet sprang up and they connected bulletin boards. So while at a certain time, a uh, bulletin board, you might exchange a message and only users of that board would see that message and can be shared. Now with FidoNet, we were connecting these bulletin board systems in a network so that in the middle of the night, the bulletin board could transfer that message from one BBS to another, and then that person on the other side could pick it up. It's kind of the, the precursor to the publicly available email. Now, email was available, but it was primarily being used in military and educational applications, but these BBSs were starting to make that available to the public. Now, InfoWorld estimated that as of 1994, which is right before we started to make that transition to an internet connect connectivity in every home, that there were 60 thousand bulletin boards serving 17 million users. So this was no fad. This was actually a tool being used to connect people like never before. So why do I want to connect the plus four to a BBS? Well, first of all, as you know, I'm very fond of the plus four, been having a blast experiencing this because this was the Commodore computer I did not own. And uh, one of the things that makes this plus four special is it does include a chip inside that is not included in many other Commodore computers. And that chip is called the 6551. Now, what's interesting is the 6551 was included in the Commodore 64, but it was emulated. So it was an emulation of a physical piece of hardware. The plus four though, because it was designed to be a business machine, they actually, they being Commodore, actually decided to include a real 6551 chip called the Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter or UART chip that could perform up to 19,200 bits per second or baud. Now, thinking about that, we started out at 300 baud. Now we have a Commodore computer capable of up to 19,200. Now, I believe, and I probably should research this more, but I believe 2,400 was the max for the Commodore 128 and 64. Correct me out there, YouTubers and bloggers. I'm sure you will. However, with this UART uh, 6551, this allowed the Plus 4 to use high-speed modems without additional hardware or re weird software tricks. The C64 required specialty software written to operate at, I believe again, 2400 bits per second or baud. At a time when 300 or 1200 bits per second modems were more common, uh, the Commodore Plus 4 was now capable of 19200. Think about that. This is a computer that was shunned by the majority of folks out there, but had one capability that no other Commodore computer could keep up with, and that was the delivery and data uh, or the delivery of data over high speed lines. Pretty impressive. So I'm looking forward to giving this a shot and seeing if we can kick that up to that 19200 at some point. So Commodore had specific plans for this to be the device you want to purchase to connect to those bulletin board systems. However, because of the short lifespan of the TED series, which is the series that the Commodore 64 is a part of, what should have been a business device, even more suited to, to telecommunications, unfortunately just languished in obscurity. Poor plus four. The BBS scene didn't die. There are BBS operators who have kept their BBS in operation since the 1980s using that original hardware, and then others who have deployed a BBS on more modern hardware, and they're still available using a phone line. So you can still dial them up using a traditional area code and telephone number, make the connection, listen to the modem, and connect to your favorite BBS. However, for me, a modem is no longer an option since there's no phone line in my house. This is my phone, and pretty sure I'm not connecting a phone line up to any of these ports. And even if I could, use a modern phone line, one of the things I want to do is I want to test a 19200 bits per second connection to a BBS using the plus four. Well, none of those original Commodore modems would support that speed. So what am I to do? Well, thankfully, 
These same operators that have these BBSs set up on their phone lines have also connected them to the World Wide Web using an internet application protocol that's been around since 1969 known as Telnet. It's still available on the World Wide Web and we can use that to connect computers. Now, if you want more information about Telnet or you want information about anything I've talked about today, make sure you check out the companion blog post for this video. All the links that I've mentioned to everything are included in that companion blog post. So be sure and check that out. So how do we connect our Commodore Plus 4 using Telnet to a BBS? Well, with the advent of modern microcontrollers and open source software, makers and 8-bit computing enthusiasts have been able to recreate a whole series of devices. Remember this little guy? The Pi 1541, which simulates a 1541 hard drive using some open source software and a um, Raspberry Pi Zero. Well, that's been created. Remember my little Tedduino, which replicates a data set using an Arduino and some open source software. Well, guess what? They have also created a modem, a Wi-Fi modem that looks like this, that plugs into the hardware, the RS-232 port. And this sweet little modem is from CommodoreForever.net. So according to the Commodore Forever website, this device allows you to connect to your favorite Commodore BBS via Telnet, support speeds from 300 to 9600 baud. We're gonna stretch that, we're gonna try anyway for use with Commodore 64 up to 9600 baud, a Commodore 128 up to 2400 baud, that's kind of odd, and a VIC-20 up to 1200 baud. So it's all across the board. But with the Commodore Plus 4 UART, I should be able, and I'm hopeful that I can push this up to about 19.2. Now, what's also interesting is the folks over at CommodoreForever.net also list that on the Plus 4, it will work, but he has no personal experience with it. So what I did is I reached out while I was placing an order for the Pi 1541 and said, you know, I'll try that for you on a Commodore Plus 4. He was nice enough just to take this little device, drop it into my box with my Pi 5041 at no charge. So thank you to CommodoreForever.net now, of course, we have the hardware, but we also need some software. And thanks to Bo Zimmerman, we have some open source software that combines an ESP8266, which is a Wi-Fi device, a custom Arduino board to create a modern Wi-Fi connection with Telnet access that uses standard and updated Hayes modem commands. Those are those AT commands, AT. DT commands, ADTI, just lots of little commands. It's almost like its own little operating system built into the modem that allows us to do things. And thanks to Bo's work, he's included some additional or updated Hayes commands that let us do things like connect to our Wi-Fi network and check out the status of the hardware, which is really slick. And you're gonna see that in this video. Now, before working on this video, I had no experience with a Wi-Fi modem. I didn't even know they existed until around 2019, right before the uh, the pandemic and COVID-19. After many hours with one, I have to say, it's a blast. It is a whole lot of fun. So make sure and do this. If you have a Commodore computer that has an RS-232 port, that little port right there, head on over to CommodoreForever.net, get you one of these. They're inexpensive. They're about $30, but they are well worth the cost of admission. Before I try to connect the Wi-Fi modem with the Commodore Plus 4 to a bulletin board, I need to identify a bulletin board to connect to using Telnet. Now, there are not a plethora of Plus 4 or Commodore C16 specific BBSs out there. I finally decided to try the Telnet BBS guide at www.telnetbbsguide.com and I popped in a search for Plus 4. The only site that came up with that search result was the BBS known as Particles BBS. Now, what I have learned since is that Particles BBS is a very popular Commodore bulletin board service that's been in operation since 1992 and is still running on Commodore 128 hardware. So how cool is that? We're gonna connect a Commodore Plus 4 to a Commodore 128 that is still in operation and online today and has been since 1992. Now, there are many other Commodore BBSs out there, and I'm sure some of you watching this will say, hey, why didn't you try this one? Why didn't you try that one? And yes, some of them may include some plus four content, but Particles BBS was the one that popped up, 
it works. I connected to it from my Mac, so that's the one we're going to use. However, if you have others that you think I should try, make sure you go down to those comments below and drop in the comments either at the YouTube video or on the companion website, both places you can make comments. I look forward to hearing which BBSs you think I should visit. So here's something fun. With Particles BBS, you can still connect old school. So if you happen to have a landline in your home and you want to connect to the Particles BBS, dial 1-479-553-8122. If you have a modem or a classic computer, you can visit this BBS using that phone number. I kind of want to try that. All right, Particles BBS, let's see what happens. Got you on speaker. The Jack customer you have called is unavailable to take your call. <laughs> Please leave a message after the tone. Okay, we have Particles BBS is going to be the BBS or bulletin board system that we connect to. Now we need to identify some Commodore Plus 4 software that we can use to connect to our Wi-Fi modem to that bulletin board. Now selecting Commodore Plus 4 telecommunications software was the hardest and longest part of this journey. There isn't a modern equivalent to the popular and up-to-date Commodore C64 software, CCGMS 2021. Check that out if you're a Commodore 64 user. Actually, I plan on trying that out at some point myself. However, the Plus 4 hasn't received the same kind of telecommunication software love. We're still stuck with software that we had back in the early 90s, so nothing has been updated, which posed a lot of problems because much of the software had not been updated to a address specific things that we need to connect to the Wi-Fi modem, such as specific settings, hardware speeds, those types of things. And my search took me to the utilities modem area of Plus 4 World. I've got a link to that in the companion blog post. So once I go to the Plus 4 World, here's what pops up. We get Plus 4 X modem, ASCII transfer, Atari Terminal Emulator. Why in the world do we have something called Atari Terminal Emulator? Now, before I continue the list, let me just say, it was so hard to pick because there is no information on this software. I look for manuals. I look for anybody with a blog post. Nobody's really talking about telecommunications on the Commodore Plus 4 or C16. Going back to our list, we had BBS Term Plus version 1.2, BBS Term Plus version 1.2, Quick version 1, Digicom 16, Higgy Term, Micro Term 264, Mini Term version 1, Modem RS-232 version 1, Point two plus four online RS232 file receiver RS232 VT100 terminal teleterm version 4.0 term 80 terminal terminal soft video text terminal workbench and X Moterm plus four version 2.0. Now, because telecommunication software is not as prolific as games and business software, again, there's little to no information on these titles. And adding to the complication with several titles have a German interface. Not a huge issue for me. I did have four years of German one. Hmm. And if you have Google Translate, you can work your way through it. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna save you the time of going through that list and tell you exactly which packages out of that list you can use with the Commodore Plus 4. So from that long list, I was able to configure Higgy Term, which is a really good package, by the way, Terminal, Term 80, which is really kind of cool because it allows you to use not just a 40 column terminal, but as the name implies, an 80 column terminal. It's a little hard to read, but it's still pretty cool. Video Text and Workbench. All of them work with varying degrees of success. Let's take a look at each one and then select the one that should be your go-to telecommunications platform on the Commodore Plus 4. None of them support Commodore graphics, so we're not going to get a lot of the fun graphics that we would see if we were using a modern terminal emulator such as CCGMS 2021, which includes those wonderful Commodore graphics and color. So we are looking at a pure text experience. Now, that may be a downer for some, but hey, for me, I was just excited that I could even get online and get into text mode. Let's go ahead and get our plus four connected. And these are all the connections I have. I went ahead and plugged in everything, including my joystick and of course my Pi 1541, which I'll be loading software from that device. And here it is, 
the magical Commodore Forever Wi-Fi modem. What we're going to do, and here's the information for the Commodore Forever Wi-Fi modem, version 2.3, and that's the RS-232. We're going to take that and we're going to plug that into the back of the Commodore Plus 4. Let's go ahead and connect our power now. Always remember to do the power last. And now let's go ahead and load an image from our Pi 1541. I have a bunch of modem software on here. And the first one we're going to do is load. Let's go ahead and load Higgy Term first. I've obviously sped up this video quite a bit. And the first thing we're going to do in Higgy Term is we're going to change our baud rate to 9600. The Commodore Forever modem really looks for that. We're going to check our status here. Now, to connect, we need to throw in a few AT commands. And you'll see the first one here is SSID. We would replace SSID with your SSID as you would with the password. Replace that with your password. All of this information is in the companion blog post. Next, we'll plug in the ATC1 command, which connects the modem to your Wi Fi network. Sometimes Sometimes it doesn't work on the first try. Do it again, don't worry. It will eventually connect on the second or third attempt. And then a couple of final settings to save those settings to the Wi-Fi modem. Now that we have the modem configured, let's load Term80 and see if we can use the software to connect. And we're going to try and connect the software at various speeds. We're going to start with 9600, which is kind of the default. Then we're going to try 19.2. Now, as I mentioned, Term 80 is in German. I have a menu translation available on the Companion website. Have you, have you guessed that you really need to visit that Companion website? There's a lot of great information there. And once you load up Term 80, you're gonna be presented with a menu that is in German. If you need help, press the Help key on the plus four and you get this wonderful screen that tells you everything you need to do. Let's go ahead and configure our baud rate. And let's see if we can get connected to the Particles BBS using particlesbbs.dyndns.org colon 6400, which by the way, the colon is on the German keyboard shift period. You will need to know that information. And we find after just a few seconds, I am connected. I have sped up pieces of this video, mainly the part that is the transfer between the bulletin board and the computer but I've tried to keep everything at the correct speed so that you can see as it transfers how fast it loads on the screen. So we are connected to the Particles BBS. I do have ANSI emulation turned on for this particular example. Term 80 is the only software I found that supports ANSI emulation. That will give you some graphics characters. It is not the same as Commodore graphics characters though. Particles is nice in that it will automatically identify whether ANSI characters are supported, as you can see in this wonderful graphic up top for the Particles logo. So it seems like everything's working. We've got 80 column mode working in 9,600 bits per second. And we also have these wonderful colors and 80 column mode. So for our first test of the Particles BBS using 9,600 bits per second or baud, looks like we're a success. Let's try something else. Sticking with term 80, we're in terminal mode and we're gonna issue a, the baud rate AT command that we used to initially establish our baud rate, but this time it's not 9600. We're gonna kick it on up to 19200 and see if we can make that same connection. Now we need to go back into our software and sync that up in our settings. If you don't do that, you're not going to be able to connect or see what you type. So using the same address again for particles, seems like we have connected. Uh, we'll say no to color graphics and yes to ANSI support. And we have a connection at 19.2 using term 80. Let me just say this is really exciting to be able to see my Commodore Plus 4 connecting to a BBS at 19.200 using, I anticipate that UART chip that's built inside. So for our second test of term 80 at 19.200, we are a success.
With Term 80 working well, let's try another application now. This time we're going to load up Higgy Term. Higgy Term is available for the Plus 4, but also for the Commodore 64. Now I've, sh I've taken the modem back down to 9600, so I'm syncing that up here. Again, when I hit that terminal screen, I just hit enter and that gets everything fired up on the Wi-Fi modem connecting to my Wi-Fi. Uh, may need to do an ATI command just to check the status to see if it's connected. It was disconnected, so I issued an ATC1 command, which is gonna connect that to my home network, as you see here. So now we're connecting, and again, sometimes you have to do this one or two times as you're finding in Higgy Term. Interestingly, it was a lot faster. There's a couple of beeps from Higgy Term there for us. Oh, we are connected. So now we're going to say no to color support, no to ANSI support, and we're going to go to 40 column mode. But you'll notice the Particles BBS logo is messed up. What I found with Higgy Term is it is not very reliable at 9600 baud. It drops characters regularly. It is a an experience you can use, but it is sometimes a little bit annoying just because it will miss characters or drop characters or send characters that don't belong. As you can see right there, we have some kind of FES slash OFP. Not sure what that is. So let's go ahead and try a different baud rate. Now I went ahead and tried 19200. I made the connection and what you're going to find is that it continually drops even more characters. It's entirely impossible to use at 19200. So what I'm going to do now is I'm really going to drop it down to 2400 baud. We're going to take Higgy term way back down to the very lowest, not the lowest, we could do 300, but we're going to take it back down to 2400 and we're going to reconnect and see if that helps with some of our error checking and some of the characters. And what you find is almost immediately that things are better. We get the whole particles logo. We don't have any dropped characters. So for Higgy term, 2400 baud seems to be the sweet spot for the connection to the other side, which if we remember, this is a Commodore 128 that we're connected to. And even though we're connected at higher baud rates, maybe 2400 is the speed that it is actually sending those bits to us. Because we have to remember, it has to process the data. There could be multiple users at the same time. So eh, again, it seems like it's fine at 2400 baud. So, and it's more stable. So I'm going to continue to use Higgy term in 2400 baud. The next package we're going to try is Video Text Term. Let's go ahead and run that. And this has a unique little menuing user interface that is shared with Workbench, actually. I'm not sure if there's a relationship, but they do have the same user interface. So when I connect, what you're going to notice immediately, and I am going to start at the lowest rate, which is 2400. You'll notice that after I connect that I start to immediately get garbage across the screen. Now, I, this is at 2400. I did try it at 9600 baud as well and was unsuccessful. So I would stay away from video text terminal. Moving on to the next one, let's try terminal plus four. Let's go ahead and try it at 2400 baud. You see that it connects. Interestingly about this software is it renders the characters very slowly and it has an echoing issue or a problem. And we can fix that with an ATE0, which will turn the echoing off. But even with that corrected, things just don't get much better as you'll find after we connect to the particles BBS. Let's go ahead and give this a shot at 2400. You see we are connected, we get some, interestingly, some color, but it's not really supporting Commodore color. It seems to be supporting ANSI color, but ANSI characters are not supported. So here we go, and you can see immediately, even at 2400 baud, we're starting to get garbage across the screen. It's got some pretty bad error handling and correction. So it's really not usable in our situation for the Wi-Fi modem. So I really love this device, and I need to thank, again, CommodoreForever.net for sending this over. You know, I've been, I've been working through the Commodore Plus 4 user's manual chapter by chapter, and at the very beginning, in one of the earlier chapters, they talk about using a modem with a device, and then I ran across that information about the Commodore Plus 4 with its UART 6551 hardware built in and how it should be used online to call, not online, but... Uh, well, I guess we could still call it online, right? To dial up a bulletin board or connect to other computers. And I just really wanted to try that. And, um, you know, it was a great experience. This has been so much fun. This is one of the, you know, I've really enjoyed the, the Commodore Plus 4 user's manual series, but this is one of the first times where I've really felt like I've gone back in time a little bit to try and do something new and unique with the Commodore computer. The user's manuals are just kind of refreshing my memory on what basic 
Commodore Basic looks like, right? Well, this was actually something brand new. So thank you, Commodore Forever, for giving me that experience of something brand new with a Commodore computer. I haven't had that feeling in a long time. Oh, hey, one more thing. If you happen to visit DeParkle's BBS, and especially if you do using the Commodore Plus 4 in the Wi-Fi modem, please send me a message. I use the handle, can you guess? Retrocombs, that's right. Send me a message to Retrocombs and I'll be sure to reply. So I got a lot of other great stuff coming up on the channel. Make sure you subscribe, hit like, hit the thumbs up, hit all that stuff down at the bottom, do all those things you need to do. Make sure you check out the companion blog post again. Check it out at stephencombs.com slash retro for all my retro computing blogs. And at this time, I think there's only one thing to say, Retro Combs out.